crush the masses? Who builds your monuments? Who tongues your taint? Uh, the people will tear it apart themselves. You just gotta nudge them a little. Then you get to swoop in and be the one saving it. Like Caesar. Like Caesar. How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel and time for another round of Luke's TV reviews on today's video. Uh, welcome back to another diabolical shit show. As our favorite superhero squash team are back for a penultimate round in The Boys Season 4. Spoiler warning by the way, I'm going to be talking about Season 4 of The Boys in full explicit detail. So make sure you're all caught up. When we last left the boys, Homelander had murdered a man in cold blood in front of hundreds of witnesses, but was showered with praise for the American hero they believe him to be. A controversial court case later, America has become divided in its support for superheroes. Can they be trusted? Do they need to be regulated? Well, for Butcher, Huey, Annie, M.M., Frenchie, and Kamiko, they're trying their damnedest to stop Homelander and a potential coup arising. Four seasons and a spin-off show, The Boys is thriving, and settling down to watch the fourth season was exciting. What new fucked up things are they going to throw in our face? What ridiculous political satire are they going to expose next? I was really excited for this season, and therefore it brings me no joy to say that season four of The Boys is decidedly its weakest, and it's a good thing that the next season will be its last. Now that may sound like I hate the show, I really don't. Seasons one and two are fucking excellent. Season three is very strong, but there are a number of moments within that season where it felt like the creators were somewhat running in circles. And now with this fourth season, that fuel gauge is pretty damn low. There's no easy way to say it, Character arcs suffered massively in this season. Everyone, and I really do mean everyone, felt as if they were running in place for the majority of this season. Something like that, yeah, it can be tolerated for an episode or two, but for that to be your entire season, that is your entire season's worth of development, and we are just repeating a lot of the same arcs that we've dealt with for all the previous three seasons, I'm sorry, but that's poor. Take Butcher, for instance. I mean, he's knock, knock, knocking on Hell's door with his jaunt with Temp V that we saw previously. And now it's resulted in a tumor growing inside of him. But, I mean, rather than take him down the route of self reflection, he's still the ruthless douchebag who regularly goes out of his way for his own agenda. Now, admittedly, pairing him with Jeffrey Dean Morgan, serving as his own personal shoulder devil, that was a nice touch. But after he snapped and killed Newman, a death which I don't personally feel served any narrative purpose besides just being something shocking, it positions Butcher as just completely unredeemable as we go into this fifth and final season. Huey, I just feel sorry for this season. He's really put through the ringer. His dad suffers a stroke and accidentally goes on a killing spree meaning that Huey has to intervene and allow his dad to die. Shout out to Simon Pegg, by the way. His performance in that episode was excellent. Then, not even is he given like an episode of grace, directly after that, he is molested and sexually assaulted as he goes undercover, and the show grossly plays that moment for laughs. And I know it changes its mind and takes it seriously by the end of the episode, but you still made a joke out of it. And then finally, he's duped into having sex and proposing to who we think is Annie, but it's actually the shapeshifter. And even after going through all of that, by the end of the season, he is exactly the same Huey who started the season. Frenchie, Kamiko, and Annie are given the spotlight at intermittent times, but their individual arcs are simply repeats of past arcs. 
all three of them dealing with repercussions of their past. Frenchie and his previous hitman ways, Kamiko and her trafficking gang coming back to haunt her, and Annie's past as a pageant kid colliding with the emergence of Firecracker, a previous rival of Starlight's. And it's a real shame because all three of these actors really give amazing performances, but they're not able to do any more because the characters aren't explored any deeper. On the flip side, the villains had considerably more to do. Homelander remains the most enthralling character of the entire show. Anthony Starr continues to hit a home run every season, making Homelander even more menacing, now culminating in him almost acting as a de facto leader of the United States. And the entire episode of him confronting the scientists who used to experiment on him when he was a child, that is going to go down as one of the top Homelander moments in this entire show. The Deep and Black Noir served as great comedic relief, and A-Train's redemption arc gradually building has me confident that he is going to play a considerable part in the final season. Two new additions to the Seven come in the form of Firecracker, a loud, brash, and particularly dim far-right podcaster who is essentially hired because of her platform rather than any power. But Valerie Curry plays her brilliantly well, and honestly resembles countless conspiracy nut jobs that probably shouldn't have a microphone. Also joining the team is Sister Sage, a really intriguing presence who poses a major intellectual threat, possessing the greatest mind on the planet and managing to foresee all possible outcomes. What's more unnerving is her revelation in the finale, as the state of American politics has been completely flipped on its head, and she just comes out and says that she did it all just to see if she could. Despite there being considerable flaws in its storytelling capabilities, The Boys does succeed in showing its audiences some truly nasty shit. The Farmyard Massacre was peak Boys insanity, and anything to do with Web Weaver was fucking nasty. As far as finales go, season 4 did manage to claw back some brownie points, just not enough to redeem the season as a whole. The political conspiring kept both the characters and the audience on their toes. And the big mic drop of an ending of all of the boys' members either being captured or in hiding, and the fact that Homelander is now running the show with potentially him awakening Soldier Boy as well. Yeah, it's setting the stage for what is going to be a climactic final season. It's a real shame season 4 panned out the way it did, because as a fan of this show, I know that this season isn't indicative of the show's overall quality. Yeah, sure, there's all sorts of bodily fluids being flung on screen and on characters, but ultimately... Hardly anything of consequence happened in this show, besides the final 15 minutes of the finale. And even then, that acted more as a setup to the final season. All the cast are clearly so comfortable in these roles, and the satire towards politics in the entertainment industry is still funny, but the creators definitely hit a wall this season. I'm going to give The Boys Season 4 a 6 out of 10. Anyway, guys, those were my thoughts on The Boys Season 4. Let me know, have you had the chances to watch the show yet? What did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And my question to you, who would you say gives your favourite performance on The Boys? And why is it Anthony Starr? But that is all the time we have for today. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Hello, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button. And if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.